Hallo, servus, what? What the hell? I was in the middle of recording a video. I know, but you're in Germany and it's December. I'm supposed to chase you through the streets and scare you. What? Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but have been living in Cincinnati, Ohio in the United States since 2016. Right now, however, I'm actually in Munich to stay with my family over the holidays, which is great, but unfortunately, Germany is currently in lockdown, so we weren't and aren't allowed to celebrate Christmas or New Year's Eve with a big group. So this year's holiday season is very different than usually, but in today's video, we're just gonna pretend that things are normal because a question that I get asked all the time is what holidays Germans celebrate? Do we celebrate the same holidays as in the US? Do we have a German national holiday? Today is the day that I'm going to answer that. Now it's kind of difficult to really define what counts as a holiday and what doesn't, especially since there are so many different traditions and cultural influences in Germany. But even if you go by days that are official public holidays, it varies a lot throughout Germany because we have 16 Bundesländer, so states in Germany, and many holidays are statewide and not nationwide. Here in Bavaria, we actually have the most legal holidays in the whole country. It's 13 throughout the entire year, so can't complain about that. So for this video, I just picked the most important days that are either important holidays in the sense of we get the day off or that are important cultural celebrations in Germany. Since we don't have a separation of state and church in Germany and it's traditionally a Christian country, many of these holidays have a religious background, but then again, some of them are secular holidays. I'll be going through the year chronologically, so we'll start in January and end with Christmas and New Year's Eve. And you can see the different chapters down here. So of course, the very first holiday of the year is January 1st. Just like in the US, New Year's Day is a public holiday. It's called Neujahr in German, and other than sleeping in and recovering from your hangover that you might have from the night before, there really aren't any major traditions. The only things I can think of are the Neujahrsspringen on TV, the New Year's ski jumping, which takes place in Garmisch-Partenkirchen each year, and it's part of a German-Austrian tournament called Vierschanzentournee, Four Hills Tournament, and the Vienna a New Year's concert where the Vienna Philharmonic plays a concert of classical music on the morning of January 1st. So many people watch that as well. The next holiday is just a few days later on January 6th. It's called Heilige Drei Könige in German, so the day of the three wise men, or also called Epiphany. For many Germans, this day marks the last day of Christmas season. That's how it's always been for my family. We set up the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve and then take it down on January 6th. You may also see Sternsinger, carolers, go from door to door on or around that day. They're usually kids who are sent out by a church and are dressed up as the wise men. They sing songs, pray, recite poems, and collect donations for good causes. Before they leave, they usually write C plus M plus B and then the year on the front door with chalk to bless the house. So if you're ever in Germany, you might be able to see that on some houses. Those letters originally stand for Casper, Melchior, and Balthazar. So the names of the three wise men, but over time people have interpreted the letters as an abbreviation of Christus Mansionem Benedicat, which means God bless your house. In some parts of Germany, the day is also a public holiday. It is here in Bavaria, for example, which is great because we get the day off, but that's not the case in all of Germany. Then the next celebration in Germany is Karneval, which takes place sometime from the end of January until early March. The exact dates vary each year, depending on when Easter is that year. Because the last day of Carnival, Ash Wednesday, is always on the 46th day before Easter Sunday. Even though there's no public holiday connected to this in Germany, Karneval, or also called Fasching or Fastnacht, depending on the region, is a major celebration in Germany. Here in Bavaria, we call it Fasching, and the celebration really start a few weeks before Ash Wednesday and then in the last week there are parades and parties pretty much non-stop. Some of the main days are Weiberfastnacht on Thursday which is a day where it's tradition for women to cut off men's ties and then the entire weekend after that usually is pretty crazy and then Rose Monday, Rosenmontag is the main day and then here in the south we also celebrate Faschingsdienstag so Fat Tuesday pretty big. Ash Wednesday, Aschermittwoch then is the end of Carnival 
festival season and the start of Lent, which is a 40 day long fast period. Carnival is something that both adults and children celebrate like crazy. In Bavaria, kids actually get a one week long school break for it. But in the Rhineland area is where they really take it to the next level, especially the city of Cologne. So Köln is known as the capital of Carnival. Many people there are off work on Rose Monday and many schools decide to stay closed as well. There are many, many traditions during that time, including wearing costumes, of course, attending street festivals and eating jelly filled donuts called Berliner or Krapfen. And we also prank others by giving them a donut filled with mustard instead. You'll also hear people shout Alaf or Hello, which are two of the main fool shouts, Narrenrufe. And of course, there's lots of socializing, drinking and dancing. Carnival in Germany has been celebrated for thousands of years and was later adapted by the Catholic Church, which is why it has so many connections to religious customs and Easter. It's also always had political sides to it, which is why criticizing politics and society in public speeches is an important part of Carnival as well. There's just so much to tell about the celebration and there's so much historical background and cultural differences within Germany that I actually dedicated a whole video to this before. Make sure to check it out. I'll put the link in the info box below or you can just click on the info card up here. I know we all can't wait until all of these holidays and celebrations can finally take place again. But until then, I personally think it's a great time to be creative and improve some of your skills. And that's why I'm happy to announce that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. It's an online learning community that offers thousands of classes where you can either discover new skills, deepen existing passions, or just get lost in creativity. Just to give a few examples, you can find video classes about things like photography or even animation. There's a really cool class where Neil Patrick Harris actually learned some basic animation skills, but there's also many classes on entrepreneurship, painting, video making, or lifestyle topics like minimalism or productivity. And for those of you wanting to learn German or another language, they also offer language classes. My mom actually completed the whole A1 level in Spanish on Skillshare during quarantine. And she was a big fan because unlike other YouTube tutorials that are out there, these classes are designed as ongoing classes with learning materials and a consecutive curriculum. Plus Skillshare is curated specifically for learning. So there are no ad breaks and they're constantly launching new premium classes. I recently discovered the class Fundamentals of DSLR Photography by Justin Bridges while I was scrolling through Skillshare. And it was really interesting for me because even though I obviously do know a little bit about how to handle a DSLR camera, I'm not a pro and it's great to get some tips and insights from a professional photographer. If you would like to join Skillshare as well, make sure to check out the link in the info box below because the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link will get a free trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. And even without that offer, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The next important holiday after Carnival is Easter, called Ostern in German, which is obviously mainly a Christian holiday, but just like Christmas, it's one that the majority of Germans celebrate, whether they're religious or not. In my family, we usually meet up on Easter Sunday for a big self-made brunch with the extended family. Sometimes when it's already warm out, we even sit outside in the yard. And then of course we do an Easter egg hunt where the kids get lots of chocolate eggs, some hard boiled eggs, and sometimes little toys. And then we hang out and play games afterwards. One game that we play every year is a Bavarian Easter game called Orsheim, where every person takes a hard boiled egg and rolls it down a rail that you make by putting together two broomsticks or something something and lean them against a table or a chair. And of course, we usually paint some Easter eggs together the days leading up to Easter. In Germany, both Good Friday, Karfreitag and Easter Monday, Ostermontag are public holidays. On Sunday, everything is closed anyway. And schools also take an Easter break during that time. I always had two weeks of Easter break. The background of Easter, of course, is the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday after his crucifixion on Good Friday. But there's also lots of traditions that are left over from pagan days such as the Easter bunny or the eggs. Besides that, it's also common to eat lamb on Easter in Germany, and you'll see colorful Easter decorations, including branches from a plant called Palmkätzchen and lots and lots of chocolate bunnies at the stores. 
A few weeks later, we get to a holiday that has a few different meanings, and that is May 1st, 1. Mai. This is a public holiday in all of Germany because it's Tag der Arbeit, Labor Day. Labor Day is a holiday that many countries have all around the world. In the US, it's celebrated in September. In Germany and some other countries like Belgium, Switzerland and Austria, it's on May 1st. It goes back to the so-called Haymarket Riot in the US in 1886, when thousands of workers protested in Chicago, demanding an eight-hour workday. To this day, people campaign for workers' rights on that day, and many German unions organize demonstrations and speeches. At the same time, though, the day is also an old cultural holiday in Germany, celebrating the start of the warm season. The traditions for this holiday vary a lot throughout Germany, but in many places it's common to set up a maypole, a maibaum. Each village or town usually has their own. Here in Munich, even some districts have their own. The setup of the pole often takes place as part of a larger event with people watching and celebrating. This is often called Tanz in den Mai, Dance into May. Here in Bavaria, many places have a beer fest for this occasion that usually starts a few days before May 1st and it's usually just called Maifest. Connected to the Maypole is the tradition that neighboring villages try to steal each other's poles, usually in a cloak and dagger operation. The villages therefore often have people guard the pole at night, and if one party actually manages to steal a pole, they start negotiating compensation to return it to the owners. I've never personally been involved with any of this, probably because this isn't a huge thing in the cities, but I always thought that this tradition sounded like a lot of fun. The last thing to mention about May 1st is the night before, so the night of April 30th, called Walpurgisnacht or Hexnacht, so Walpurgisnacht or Witch Night. Traditionally, it's considered a night when witches meet up and celebrate together at the Blocksberg, which is another term for the mountain Brocken in northern Germany. It's common to have a huge bonfire, Maifeuer, to scare away evil spirits, and it's also very common, especially for young people, to play pranks on others that night. I personally grew up with the term Freie instead of Walpurgisnacht, and I always thought that this was because people are free to do otherwise illegal things on that night, which of course is not the case, but I definitely used to TP some cars in my streets with my friends when I was younger. Honoring your parents is something that people do all over the world. However, Mother's Day and Father's Day don't take place on the same day everywhere. In Germany, Mother's Day Muttertag is on the third Sunday in May, just like in the US. Father's Day, however, isn't on the third Sunday in June, like in the US, but instead it's celebrated on a Christian holiday called Christi Himmelfahrt, Ascension Day, which is 39 days after Easter Sunday, so it's always on a Thursday in May or in June. Nowadays, the Christian holiday isn't celebrated largely anymore. Instead, most people only celebrate Father's Day, Vatertag, which is also called Herrentag or Männertag, Men's Day in some regions. For some reason, it's almost become a tradition for a German man to use this day to meet up with their male friends and then go on a little day trip while drinking all day. Many of them take a handcart with them for the beer and then go on a hike with it or do something else outdoors. After Father's Day slash Ascension Day, there's another Christian holiday that I probably wouldn't even mention if it wasn't a public holiday in Germany, because it's not something that many people actually celebrate nowadays. I'm talking about Pentecost, Pfingsten, which takes place on the Sunday that's 49 days, so seven weeks after Easter. It commemorates the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and other followers of Jesus Christ. And yes, I had to look that up, because even though it's been a public holiday in Germany my whole life, I keep forgetting its original meaning every year since I'm not religious myself. And as I said, people don't really celebrate this day a lot anymore. Pentecost Sunday is a day off anyways, but then on top of that, Pentecost Monday, Pfingstmontag is a holiday as well. And in some parts of Germany, schools take a break. In Bavaria, it's a two week long school break. After Pentecost, some German states also get Corpus Christi, Fronleichnam, off, which is a Catholic holiday on the Thursday that's 60 days after Easter. After that, there really aren't any major holidays in Germany until October. And no, I'm not referring to Oktoberfest, because even though many people believe that Oktoberfest is a holiday that Germans celebrate, 
It really isn't. It's a beer festival that takes place in Munich from mid-September through the beginning of October and that many other places have based their own festivals on, oftentimes while using the same name even. If you want to know more about Oktoberfest, be sure to check out this video, but Oktoberfest is not a holiday in that sense. What I was really referring to is October 3rd, Tag der Deutschen Einheit, German Unity Day. This is the day that so many people ask about. It's Germany's national holiday. So yes, we do have one and it's a relatively new one actually because we celebrate the reunification of West Germany and East Germany, so the former GDR. As many of you might know, the Berlin Wall fell on November 9th, 1989, but since that date also happens to be the anniversary of many other significant days in German history, mainly bad ones, we celebrate the day when the two parts of Germany were formally reunified on October 3rd, 1990. It is a public holiday in Germany and there are usually some big events taking place in our capital Berlin, but unlike Independence Day in the US, it's not really a holiday that Germans celebrate privately with their family and friends. So there are no fireworks or big get-togethers, it's usually just a day off to us. Then of course Americans celebrate Halloween at the end of October and as I've mentioned in my video about Halloween, again you can find the link in the info box, this holiday has come over to Germany very recently so you'll particularly see younger people celebrate it but it doesn't really have any traditional meaning in Germany. Nevertheless October 31st is indeed a holiday in many parts of Germany but for different reasons. It's Reformation Day which marks the beginning of the split of the Protestant Church from the Catholic Church. October 31st, 1517 is the day that the German monk Martin Luther nailed his 95 Theses on the door of the All Saints Church in Wittenberg. And then the very next day, November 1st, is actually a Catholic holiday called All Hallows Day or All Saints Day, Allerheiligen, which is a day to honor the saints and to pray for the recently deceased. And this is also a holiday in some German regions. So basically October 31st is a holiday in the more Protestant regions in Germany and then November 1st is a holiday in the more Catholic regions. This is a holiday that I have some amazing childhood memories connected to. I recently talked about it on my Instagram story. November 11th is St. Martin's Tag, St. Martin's Day. It's not a legal holiday, but it has some great traditions. It's a Christian holiday celebrating the French Bishop St. Martin of Tours, who lived back in the fourth century. And he's particularly known for having cut his cloak in half with his sword to share it with a beggar during a snowstorm. It's common that for this day, German kids make a lantern at school or at home with their parents and then walk in processions at night while carrying their lanterns and singing songs. I did that every year as a kid. Oftentimes there's also a person dressed up as Saint Martin riding along on a horse and reenacting the story with the beggar. There's also usually Saint Martin bonfires and people traditionally have a Saint Martin's goose on that day, either an actual goose or people also make these little goose shaped pastries. In some regions of Germany I've learned that kids also go from house to house with their lanterns turns, sing songs and then get candy from the people. So it's a little bit like trick or treating in the US, but here in Munich we didn't used to do that. In the US, Thanksgiving is one of the biggest holidays of the year and it's celebrated at the end of November. So do we have something similar in Germany? Nope, not really. I mean, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Technically, we do have a German equivalent called Erntedankfest that takes place on the first Sunday in October, but it's mainly celebrated in church nowadays and it's not a major family celebration like Thanksgiving is in the States. I've personally never celebrated Erntedankfest and I don't think I know anyone who celebrates that. Now let's talk about Christmas, my favorite holiday and my favorite season of the year. I've actually dedicated a whole video to Christmas season in Germany last year because there's just so many traditions and foods and things to talk about. So check out the full video if you want to know more, link is in the info box, or check out the podcast episode on Understanding Train Station where Josh and I talked about that topic too. But here's the short version. Christmas season in Germany starts with the beginning of Advent time with the first Advent Sunday, Erste Advent, which is the fourth Sunday before Christmas. That's the day when people light the first of four candles on their Advent wreath, which is a thing that most people have. And then there's also Advent calendars that pretty much mark the countdown from December 1st to December 24th. So Christmas Eve, which is the day that Germans get their presents. Throughout Advent time, you'll see people put Christmas decorations up that are 
usually a little more subtle than the ones in the US. You'll hear Christmas songs on the radio. Those are mostly the same ones as in the US. People bake Christmas cookies and there's lots and lots of Christmas markets, Weihnachtsmärkte or Christkindlmärkte, where people meet up to get some food and mold wine and other goods. On December 6th, we celebrate Nikolaustag in Germany, St. Nikolaus Day, which means that kids put a shoe or a boot in front of their door on the night of December 5th. And then in the morning, they'll find that St. Nikolaus, who's usually portrayed as a bishop, has left some treats in there, such as chocolates, nuts or clementines. Traditionally, only the good kids get those treats, though. The bad ones are being punished by St. Nikolaus's companion. In the northern parts of Germany, that companion is called Knecht Ruprecht, but here in Bavaria and some other parts, he's called Krampus and is more of a monster-like looking creature than a person. So it's kind of creepy and there are even events called Krampus Runs in many places here, where people dress up as Krampus and then chase pedestrians through the streets. Yep, it's a thing. Now, the thing with St. Nicholas is that he's the origin of Santa Claus, but in Germany, those are considered two different figures because on St. Nicholas Day, we celebrate a more traditional version of him. So it gets a little confusing sometimes. Moving on in the Christmas timeline, the main focus in Germany lies on Christmas Eve. In the morning, most Germans put up their trees and decorate them, and they're mainly real trees in Germany. And then at night, people have a Christmas dinner, maybe sing Christmas songs and get their presents. In many parts of Germany, it's the Weihnachtsmann who brings them, the Christmas man, which is basically a version of Santa Claus. But here in the South, as well as in Austria and some other countries, it's the Christkind, the Christ child who brings the presents. It's usually portrayed as an angel like figure with wings and blonde hair, usually a girl, but it's also somehow supposed to be Jesus at the same time. Christmas Eve itself is not a legal holiday in Germany, but stores usually close around 2 p.m. so that people can go home and celebrate with their families. And then we have two legal holidays following called the first and the second Christmas holiday on December 25th and December 26th. Many families celebrate with just their immediate family on Christmas Eve and some of the traditional Christmas dinners are sausages with potato salad or sauerkraut or fish or a Christmas goose and then they meet up with their grandparents and other extended family on the first and second Christmas holidays. Of course this year was very different. In my family we usually celebrate with the extended family right on Christmas Eve. It's around 15 or 16 people and we usually eat raclette and broth fondue but this year we weren't allowed to so this was my first Christmas Eve ever that I only spent with my immediate family. Then as I've said at the beginning of the video the Christmas Christmas decoration usually stays up until Epiphany on January 6th. And just like in other countries, this is a holiday that most Germans celebrate, even those who aren't actually religious. And for many people who are somewhat religious, it's the only day of the year that they actually go to church. And that brings us to the very last day of the year, New Year's Eve or Silvester as we call it in German, which is coming up in a couple of days. And that's why I'll dedicate a whole video to that topic to share with you guys what you need to celebrate New Year's Eve like a real German. Spoiler, it'll include some lead or tin, a black and white TV show, and pigs. If you want to learn more, make sure to check out my video on December 31st. And in order not to miss it, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking this nice looking red button and then activating the notifications by clicking the bell. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this video was helpful for you. I tried to summarize these holidays the best I could, but I'm sure many of you have things to add. So please feel free to do so in the comments below. If you're German, what are some traditions that you celebrate in your region that I didn't mention? or maybe don't even know about or if you're from somewhere else do you celebrate the same holidays as we do in Germany and if so what are your traditions thank you so much for sharing your experiences if you want to get more content from me feel free to follow me on Instagram and on Facebook it's just and on patreon.com where you can also support me. Or you can also buy me a coffee or a champagne for New Year's Eve if you want to on buymeacoffee.com slash It's highly appreciated and I hope I'll see you on New Year's Eve then for my Zylvester video. So until then, stay safe everyone. Tschüss!